Friday morning. Welcome to Begin in the Word. Our text today comes from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. Therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure you may be able at any time to recall these things. We're continuing here a look at Second Peter chapter 1, and immediately off the bat you'll see the connection between this body of text and the previous section through discussion of these qualities. The Greek here literally says these things, but in the previous verses it's very clear that these things refers to the list of virtues Peter gives earlier in the chapter. Add to your faith virtue, and to your virtue knowledge, and so forth. These qualities that we need to have and need to have increasing, he wants to remind us of these things. It's interesting to me that the translators don't translate these things at the end of this phrase as these qualities, though in my mind it's pretty clear that these things at the end of this section refers back to these qualities. These are the qualities that Peter wants to remind us of. He does not want us to forget them. In fact, he says he is going to make every effort so that after his departure we'll be able to recall these things. Remember back in the previous section, he tells us as Christians to make every effort to increase in our Christian virtue. And here he says he's going to make every effort to remind us about these things so that we can do that. So Peter's making every effort. We're making every effort. This is a group effort. This is a group work, a group mission to grow in Christian faith, both on the part of the believer and on the part of Peter reminding us and encouraging us in that process. He says, I want to always remind you. Now, this is a problem for Peter. This letter is likely written somewhere in the mid-60s. This is during the persecution of Nero or thereabouts. Peter knows that he is not long for the world. He knows this for two reasons. One, he's likely getting upwards in years. But two, he remembers that Jesus, during his ministry, told Peter that he would die a martyr's death. And he alludes to that. He says, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me, Jesus told me that I'm going to die in a certain way. I'm getting old, Peter says. And so this martyr's death must be soon upon us. And Peter knows that, and he wants to always remind us, and so he writes this letter. That is the motivation behind the letter of Second Peter. Peter knows that he's not long for the world, and he wants Christians to remember, so he writes this letter down. Now, how did Peter know that he was not long for the world? As Lord Jesus made clear to me, this seems to be a reference back to the Gospel of John, chapter 21, verses 18 through 19. This is after Jesus' resurrection, and Peter has gone back to something of a normal occupation after the resurrection, and Jesus meets with Peter, and he has this discussion. Read about this in verse 18 of chapter 21 of John. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you, carry you where you do not want. This he said to show by what kind of death he was to glorify God. Jesus gave him some insight into the form or the nature of his death. He says, you're going to stretch out your hands, which seems to be a clear allusion to crucifixion. In fact, church history bears witness to the fact that Peter died in Rome during the persecution of Nero by means of crucifixion. In fact, he was crucified upside down, some tradition says. So Peter knows that his death is imminent. It's coming. Jesus told him he would die this way as a martyr's death. And he says, my death is near. I'm going to remind you. One other interesting feature of this text is this word departure. After my departure, I believe this is a witness to the authenticity of this letter, that Peter, in fact, wrote this letter. The word departure here is not the normal word for death. It is the Greek word for exodus. This word is used three times in the New Testament, once in the book of Hebrews with reference to the exodus, and another time in the Gospel of Luke in chapter 9, verses 30 through 31 where this is at the Mount of Transfiguration, where Peter, James, and John have gone up with Jesus onto the mount. And the Bible says, And behold, two men were talking with him, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his departure that he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. When Peter witnesses Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus, the text doesn't say they were talking about his death, even though that was true. A very interesting word Luke uses. They were talking about his departure. 
why refer to Jesus' death at the Mount of Transfiguration as his own departure? And Peter was an eyewitness to this. Luke says in his prologue that he researched these things. He no doubt interviewed eyewitnesses to learn about what happened during Jesus' earthly ministry. And it's so fascinating he uses the word departure that Peter also uses here to refer to his death. You might say that's just a, a strange coincidence. What's fascinating is that in the coming verses that we'll look at next time, Peter immediately from this section talks about the Mount of Transfiguration, as if to say his memory was stirred by use of the word departure to refer to his death. It's an unusual thing. It happens once, we might say, well, that's just Luke using that word. But the fact that both Peter and Luke use the word Exodus in proximity to their discussion of the Mount of Transfiguration, that's more than just a coincidence. That to me is evidence that this is eyewitness material. This is Peter reflecting on his own memory that he had at the Mount of Transfiguration. We'll look at that with some more detail when we come back to Second Peter in the future. Thanks for joining us today on Begin in the Word. It's my hope that just as you have started today in the Word of God, you'll live out today in the Word of God.